right, ladies and gentlemen. Today we going for fucking. The origin of this so-called Jesus Christ. I mean, this is gonna be fucking scary. It's gonna be hard to to break down this, especially for all of us that believe in God, believe in Jesus, that believe in the Christ. Today, from the eyes of the classical Greek. This guy is a master in the medicine, in the ancient medicine. He's a master in ancient Greek. He read all of these uh, texts from the past. Apparently, like what he's saying, Bible, the origin of the Bible is in the, in, uh, in the Greek, in the ancient Greek. Can you believe that? 2000. Five, uh, 25,000. It's about 25,000. Remember that? Uh, 250,000 worth in ancient Greek. While the Hebrew themselves only 8,000. How pretty fucking ridiculous is that? So, these guys. Uh, decoding, not just decoding, I mean like explaining and translating a lot of uh, ancient text, the origin of the Bible. Obviously, and I've been checking it myself, it's fucking different. What they're saying is so different and you guys gonna be up for some crazy, crazy journey and adventure let's start this shit let's start this shit and no hold barrel guys this is gonna be scary let's go directly to the mr amon 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 Hillman. He's a channel called Lady Babylon. And he is amazing. He is amazing. He is amazing. They will explain to you what the drugs they used back in the ancient time. Back to Lady Babylon. This is better yes. than me. Thank you for coming in tonight. I appreciate it. Um, and I want to give you the best of the best material tonight. So um, with, without any sort of hesitation or delay, let's jump right into it. I want to put up a couple of comments here. And those comments will help us transition to points that we need to make. Um, welcome to those of you who are new to the sat satanic congregation. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to Lady Babylon. It's nice to have you. Um, it's nice to fill you in. It's nice for you to be able to see this stuff uh, written out right in front of you without somebody feeding you ideas and theories, but just straight up reason, baby. Just straight up sources. That's all we need. Because nobody's here for my ideas. Right? I don't have somebody ask me, you have some ideas? No, I don't have ideas. I've got text, though, if you want to talk text. Um... I want to start with a comment. Bring up this first comment. Go ahead, Chewie. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not comment. a fucking mumbo jumbo bullshit. My brain sees salvation from Salway. Now, Amen Christ makes more sense to me. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. You're right. You're right. And if anybody, if anybody's listening, buried here, buried here is just a faint wind, a faint wind of the sacred name. Fantastic, that's that hidden name. Shh, don't tell anyone. Hit the next one. Oh, goodness, a five-minute video would suffice. Would it? Would it? I wish Amon would talk about Christos as used in spiritual context and hear his explanation why he doesn't agree with that. You want to hear what? You want me to 
explain something? I don't agree or disagree with anything, person. I don't. MacGoover, I don't agree with anything or disagree, but since you want to see what a real Christ thing is, um, I, I need you to know, MacGoover, that there is no separation in antiquity between the religion and the salvation and the health. The drugs are all a part of it. And I know that's rough for you to consider. I mean, it's, it's probably rough for you to consider that God is a woman. Right? People are shocked, by the way. If I can just say this, the word for God, theos, is uh, not a masculine form. The oldest references we have to it, it can be both masculine and feminine. The concept of feminine divinity which is entirely lacking in the monist traditions uh, was a basic part of the language of ancient Greek. So you got to get that into your head right now. You got to you got to be uh, fully happy to appreciate um, uh, the fact that God is a she. Fantastic, um, boy! That would give him a hard time. One. Let's hit the hit the next one. Oh my God! Where is the best place to learn ancient Greek? This brings us to the next point. Uh, thanks for your clarity. Thank you. Yes, on the roof. It's fantastic experience. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'm glad you. It's because people have been asking, and I have been trying to devise mechanisms. First, I talked to the wealthy, and I said, "Wealthy, give me some." And they said, "We got nothing for you because you can't accommodate." Oh God, where can I build my spring? Where can I guard the temple of the muse? I turned away from the rich. And then I thought I could do it myself. <sighs> and I got an email from several of you saying the same thing. Uh, I can't afford to pay for, you know, any kind of classes or anything, but I'm really interested in this material. It's to those people the devil eventually convinced me. It's to those people that we owe uh, this right, this privilege. So what I am announcing tonight is that starting Wednesday night, Almond University will open on Lady Babylon. Now, over 20 weeks, I will take you through an intensive course in ancient Greek. 20 weeks. And what we will do is we will get people enlisted and through basic training. Many of you will want to take it. Many of you will want to take it. Many of you will be able to complete it. All of you, all of you should, as long as you have the desire. It's up to me to push you through the program so that you can get to the other side. Doesn't matter what your IQ is, doesn't matter how smart or how stupid you are. We all start out at the same place, ignorant, of ancient Greek. Yeah. If you want to be part of a very distinguished group, a group that includes people like Thomas Jefferson, all right, a group that includes some of the greatest minds, Sappho. You want to sit with Sappho? You want to be in her you want to be in her club? This is the avenue for you to access that. This is Wednesday night. This will be on YouTube. On YouTube, good question. Thank you. It'll be on YouTube. Why? Because the devil said, you know how it is, Zaman. You know, like, you know how it is, Zaman. When you get in this game, the contract says, you want the knowledge? You can't take any money for it. You can't get rich off of it. You can't sell it. Yeah, fantastic. I'll make my own way. I'll pay Fantastic. for my pizza. I'll do it, people. I don't want you to pay for my pizza. <laughs> so this channel, Lady Babylon, will never be monetized. It will never be monetized. I can guarantee you will never watch commercials. And what we have to do is break the algorithm. We break the algorithm because not taking money is not acceptable in the world of the profit makers. That is what we're here to break. We're here to break that system. 
Does Armin have a Patreon? No. No, he doesn't no, have Patreon. No, Archie. I do not do that. I cannot do that. Archie, I can't. The, the contract would be broken. Say contract, satanic contract right out the window. There's classical. one thing Satan hates. Hey, he Satan. hates greed. He hates greed. Oh, God. And humans. Oh, God. Oh, God. Humans are so for it. Oh, no. <sighs> It's like we breathe it. Oh my god. Wow. So no, I let's would love to see us let's break start the system. Shit. Oh what? That's amazing. On YouTube. Yes. The nut, I think that's me. Will, will not be sacrificed for the flower. <laughs> no monetization. No corruption. Thank you very much. You got it, HT. You got it. You got it. Give me uh the next comment that I pulled up because that's guiding us as we're going through our talk. Now, Wednesday night will not be presented in the same way that Lady Babylon on Friday or on <laughs> the Bed of the Muse on Sunday will be presented. This Sunday presentation is just you and me and the Muse. This is our time. This is our time to relish. There's going to be no arguments. There's going to be no, none of, none of, no controversy. We don't need that. Um, what do you need to do? If you're going to enlist, go ahead, put it up, Chewy. Here, here is the here is the bad boy. I have taught with many, many Greek texts. This intensive course is the best. And why is that? Because I took it in a second. I think it was second or third year that they started it. You know what I mean? And I went to Berkeley and took this intensive course. Um, this was Hanson and Quinn who made this. This is the second revision. So make sure you get the second revision. And I've used this with students, and I can tell you, I have the greatest success from this text. And if I push you, take it down, like a drill sergeant, and people will rise to the occasion because people want this. People want to excel. And what this is is elite training for your brain. Right? I'm not going to stuff your head full of facts. I can't. I'm going to give you the machinery of the ancient Greeks, and that will reshape and remold your brain. <sighs> they can take your CAT scan beforehand, there, your PET scan. Give that guy a PET scan. Wait a while until he's done. Give him another one. Oh my God, he's, look, he's lighting up. He's lighting up. Um, that's the power of the language, and um, you will be humbled by that constantly. Those of you who have the desire to jump into that stream, for those of you who have the calling, I'll be waiting on Wednesday nights for one hour. Then I'll push you through the program. I'll push you through the program. Yeah, listen to my voice and do everything I say. You'll be reading Greek. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's get this thing started. Chewy, give me the next thing. I'm going to give myself one more comment. Trying to watch the video at the gym, but creepy Jesus and boy pictures are making me look like an absolute weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? This Big is fantastic. Great. Thank you, Chief Ghoul. Thank you, Chief Ghoul, for taking us on a workout. That's fantastic. Are you doing it now? Everybody, right? Dude, come on. Come on, do it. <laughs> He's looking at pictures of Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Ew. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Give me the next one. Um, why hail Satan while claiming not to be religious or a Satanist, right? Which, you know, I'm not. It is to make a point. Wait, wait, wait. Is it to make a point? What is the point? Or is it simply to excite Christians? It does all of that stuff. And I'm, it's wonderful watching you go through the process, Jim. Watching you go through the process. Look at what happens here. He says, I am fascinated. Oh my god, Jim. Jim, did you know? Did you know what fascination is? Everybody, what is a phosgenum? It is an ancient priapus, an ancient erection, a phallus, a dildo. There's lots of different ways to say it. Yes. But that's what it is. 
That's what uh, fascination is when somebody points that at you. I'm <laughs> fascinated. I'm brooded. <laughs> predators out there looking at me. Oh God. God. Love. Listening to you at worst today. I'm people uncomfortable. People get uncomfortable out there. Hail Satan, right? Every <laughs> Satan. Why do I say Hail Satan? Um look at <sighs> No, no, this isn't no, that's okay. It was the last one. Give me Yep. That's okay. I'm still a boy coming out of a cave. Oh no, how do we get <laughs> Come on, man. Um, the truth still makes me close my eyes in shock like the night rays bright. Okay, after being in the dark so long. Um, look, this is a process. People have always communicate this, and I try to explain it to them as, um, as you're peeling back that unreality that floats around you and has been crammed down your throat all your life, thing that you've been breathing, right? It's become a part of you as, you, as you're unrooting that. You're going to pull up things like confusion. You're going to pull up things like uncertainty, right? That's all okay. That's the part of, you know, and when you're in a laboratory and you're doing experiments, um, you got the same anxieties. You have the same transformations. As you walk on that path of reason, baby, right? You can't go wrong. Just hang in there on the path. I had you playing in love with you. Yeah, fantastic. Let's go to the next one. There was one we missed. There was a good comment we missed, and I want to get on to the meat. Maybe it's this one. Get that one, Chewy. Okay, why he'll say there is I want to finish this. Claiming not to be religious. This is to make a point, etc. I'm fascinated and confused. Seems very honest. I love the choice not to be tainted by the filth. I like this. That is merging truth with monetization. People, listen here to Jim for one minute. Thank you, Jim. Mm. Mm. Just want the chance here. To recognize that we're not tainting this with the filth of monetization. What a novel, what a novel thing. Now, um, tonight I want to bring you something that's be a little bit shocking, and it's going to take us out of our typical shoes and put us into somebody else's sandals. It's an orgy. I'm bringing you back to the Bacchic orgy again. We're going to see a description of one. And you're going to find somebody there that's going to surprise you. What is he doing in a pocket orgy? Fantastic. Give me the, give me the first. Uh, Get ready. Uh, first Buckle up. Search right there when you can't shoot. Okay, here we go. Look, people, what is this? Now, everybody in the room, this is one thing I love here because everybody in the room who is not a classicist um, looked at this and said, wait a minute, I thought I learned Greek. Right, is that not is that great? But it doesn't look. It's odd. It's weird. There's words there that there's I've never seen before. Oh my God! Yes, this is Nonus. This is Nonus, and Nonus writes a giant epic. It's the longest Greek epic about Dionysus. So you can imagine there are descriptions in dactylic hexameter. What Nonus has done that you can't appreciate from this text, and I really can't appreciate it like I should either. But this is written in dactylic hexameter. This thing is meant to be performed as a religious rite. It's got the cadence that we use if we're sibyls. Uh, it's got the Orphic meter. Fantastic. And I want to say, just right from the top, what does it say? Are you ready? Picture this. We're going. Bacchic Gorgi, and you're, you help me find the person who's there that you, sh you wouldn't think would be at one. Um, all of the people gathered together in order to generate that Bacchus song performed during the evening revels. Fantastic. So we're gathering together. We're going to give this Bacchus revel. What do we do? We establish the rites. It is through the Bacchus revel that the mystery is executed. Anytime Jesus talks about mystery, Paul talks about mystery. We're talking about a very specific operation, like the one Jesus is performing in the Garden of Gethsemane. <laughs> go, who's at this Bacchic orgy? Oh, my God. We've got the drums. We've got the drums playing. You know what I mean? And people are dancing. And what else is happening? The torches are torching, baby. 
they're just all brilliantly lit up. These are torch lit rhymes. You gotta, you gotta get a little bit of the ambiance if you want the real mystery. You know what I mean? This is way, way older than any of the mysteries that you've been taught about. Lovely. And what happens here? What happens here? Oh my God! Look at the last four lines, people. Look at the last four lines. The women. The women step up, and what do they produce? They produce a song. They produce a song that is the Thelus Iowe, third line from the bottom. Thelus Iowe. The woman's shout. Oh, God, where, where, do, where do they put it? They put it into the air. Oh, God, they seed the air with their cries. And what are they doing? They're creating. They're creating a communion, a communion that is the life energizer, the life magnifier, the life mania. Okay. Bacchic women. I want you just to look at the one, two, three, four, five, six line down. Look at the second word in the six line down. Krionto. Krionto. Wait, what does this say? It says Krionto. that the followers of Bacchus are Christed. Christed. It says the followers of Bacchus are Christed. What are they Christed with? They're Christed with a chalk. Sometimes it's an earth. You have to know how they're doing medicines. Sometimes it's an earth. It's a sediment that is m made into a clay that dries upon the face. And they put it on their cheeks so that the burning purple will be captured. That com the burning purple that they put in their eyes. Um, this is for the oystromania. This is the Christ thing that brings the salvation or the health. Right? Without this Christ thing, you are not um, part of those born of the ion. Do you understand me, right? No, you don't, because you haven't been through initiation. We didn't kick you over to the other side. You didn't see what was there. You didn't come back, and now you're full of the knowledge of what the actual universe is. Yeah, eyes open, ending up naked. Why do we always come back naked? <laughs> if there was another way to get the drug that wasn't so efficient, trust me, we would do that. But for now, shh, shh, just shh, okay. That's why they give them sedatives. Oh, God. Phew. Okay, bring it up one more, uh, under the Christ. I just want to see under the Christ, <clears throat> right there. Um, I want you to notice that the Christ here, on that um, one, two, three, four, five, six line down, I want you to see, what, what is that Christ doing? That Christ is musti poloi kionto pareia leucadi kupsoi. What? What? What kind of drug is this that they're using? It's a mustipoic drug. It is, what does that mean? That's a drug that is used within a mystery rite. You mean they have their own classification for drugs? Yeah, baby. That are used in mysteries? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. You mean I thought just just this week I woke up like Dan and I thought Jesus Christ was some kind of special thing. That term Christ was some kind of special thing. It was Jesus made up or was given to Jesus to the sacred and inerrant word of God gave to Jesus? And you mean that is an older title, a concept that's not at all unusual, that we all know what it means, and it's pharmaceutical? Yeah. Yes. Salvation is pharmaceutical. How do you think you get ionic life? <clears throat> you will lift up serpents. You'll lift them up. You'll drink. I'm Jesus. I'm doing my Jesus impression. <laughs> You'll drink the death inducers, but they will not harm you. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus wants me to drink death-inducing drugs. Jesus, I love you so much. Oh, God, it's all that arrow stuff. I thought it was the arrow stuff. Let's take them there. We got the arrow. Come on, give me the next one. We're going fast tonight, people, because this is the sacred bed, man. This is heroin. We protect. We protect this environment. Um, I just want you to notice the people that are doing this on line 732. The Omegaris Politi. Who are the people who are involved in the Bacchic ritual that you're watching? These are citizens. These are citizens who work together. That's what the Bacchic initiation is. Servants who work together. And what do we do? We get into these groups. Are you ready to get a chorus going? Are you ready to get a chorus going to purge the state? Get your mask on. Get your mask on. Did you wonder why they wore masks in tragedies? Because they are Bacchic celebrations. They are Bacchic rituals. The priest of Bacchus sits right up front. Make sure that nothing is done incorrectly. They say that stuff that you put on your face now is going to be able to combine with the purple. And strangely enough, it may make the goop that's on Jesus' face when he's got that bandage wrapped around that little boy's private parts and through which he is drawing the child's galene, galene. The antidote to that combination of the purple with the venoms that he has impregnated in that linen wrap. It's a chemical rite. Salvation is a chemical process. What you see today is nothing what original Christianity was. Nothing. It's not even close. It's not it's a, it's a laughing stock. Yes. Oh my goodness. Didn't you think she would come back? Didn't you think Lady Babylon would come back? Right? What do you think she what do you think the whole deal is? Let's see the next one, and we're done. Let's see the next one. Nope. Yeah, uh, the next Greek text. Uh, was it the other book? Maybe that one. Okay, go ahead. Chewy, randomize this thing. Here we go. Who do we need, people, for this cult? Now, let's just call the name of the god. Let's just call him. What are they doing, right? Remember, we're watching them. We didn't even have the ship take off tonight. We just went right there. Here they are. We're watching a Bacchic ritual, right? Who are we calling on? We're calling on Iobachos. Iobachos. Very first line. Iobachos. Iobachos. And what is Iobachos doing here? He is gathering his women and his horned satyrs together. And he is entering the Bacchic mania for the sake of conflict. When he sees his enemy defender of that city of Argos. And what does he do? He holds up his thyrsus. He holds up his wand. This is the one with the serpents on it. This is the one with the serpents on it. Does somebody see Moses? Does somebody see what the author of the third century Septuagint, who's writing the Bible in Greek, do you see what he did? He took Bacchus, yes, and made him Moses, the follower of the Muses, aka Musaeus. Hebrew. Now we didn't. I didn't make that up, right? I didn't. I didn't figure that out. I may after over time. I might have figured that out, but um, I did. They did in antiquity. You mean? People challenged Moses in antiquity. Yes. Why? Because before the third century, um, he didn't exist. There's no quotes. Can you believe Moses would write his books way back in like 1200, maybe as early as 13, 1400 BC? But he would write them way back then, and nobody between then and all the way down in the third century would ever quote them. Nobody would make a vase and put a Word on it, and he, those don't exist? Nope. Somebody said the other night, a theologian stood on this stage 
and said to you via Spank him. that I played. Yeah, he said Hebrew literature. Let me um, alert you to something right now. There is no Hebrew literature. It doesn't exist. You have the Septuagint. That's it. Nothing is quoted. You don't have anybody in Pindar's day quoting. Oh, let's quote Moses. Quote mm. Moses, right? What you do have, that's because the language was dead, right? Hebrew was long dead by then. Um, the, 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 what you do have in Greek uh, writings, like Dioscorides in the first century, he'll talk about the name for specific drugs. And he'll say, oh, the Babylonians call it this, the Romans call it this, the Greeks call it this, um, uh, you know, talk about North Africans, what do they call it? And, um, oh, in uh, the Hebrews call it this. So we know. We know that there's the concept of the language in the society, but we know it's not being used. It's not even showing up in the synagogue. It's irrelevant. The Torah is a fictional work from the third century BC. Let me say that one more time. I'm going to say that I want it to make the impact that it should, because um, if you understand this, ah, it calls into question a lot. The big three, the monists, man, have a problem with this. They can't live with this, right? No, they can't live with this because it means Moses and Abraham and Noah are all made Bullshit. up. Bullshit. Yeah. Now, let me give you an example of the concrete reality of what I'm trying to expose for you. When I was at Tel Megiddo, which is in Israel, and it's the reputed side of Armageddon, isn't that nice? When I was there, there was the building way over the temple, right? Layer wise, way over. Probably Iron Age. Probably Iron Age. And they were already calling it the building of Solomon. They had it named already. Uh -huh. Do you know how dishonest that is? That is what Israel Finkelstein fought against. He's telling, he's telling everybody, hey, um, this stuff, is, is this kingdom of Israel stuff, there's no fucking evidence for this. Excuse me. There's no archaeology for this. Well, it's the same thing on the writing side. There is no Hebrew. Well, weren't there only in the idea there were older Hebrew texts? Yeah, that's the idea, but that wasn't a reality. There weren't any texts. Huh. You mean ancient Hebrew is no different from Oscan and Umbrian from Italy, that they had a very small vocabulary and eventually got swallowed up by a more proficient language like Latin or Greek, right? Yes. Yes, that's what happened. When you go into those ancient synagogues and you look, what's there? Greek, surprise, the Zodiac is there. If you are practicing um, uh, Orthodox Jew today, and you do not follow Ion and the Zodiac, um, you're not doing what they did. All right? You're not doing what they did. So, Yao is the God that, um, that was followed by monists of the second and first centuries BC. All right? That's the history that comes from the documents themselves. Okay, okay, let's get back to that source. I want to get back to that source. Just say a couple of things. Just look at the Greek people. Eobakos is who the ride is celebrated. He gathers his women, right? His women, what do his women do? They are the voice, dude. You don't have anything at a Bacchus level if you don't have the voice. Everything is about the female voice that's on that line, it talks about Yahweh that we looked at before, that feminine voice. Now, if you think about this for a minute, the, I'm telling you, the mystery rite, pre-Christian, the mystery rite is being brought into existence through a very specific female voice. Chewie, do you want to show us something? Yeah, Chewie.
Uh, no. To show us something. Give it, fire. Give it to us. Give us to us. Yes, of course. So I will. Um, I will uh, push now. You know, I've got a lot of comments um, from women who are saying, "Hey, it's nice to see some strong women who were not, you know, um, pictured to, uh, you know, who, you know, you, you maybe you didn't think this type of person existed." You know, I was watching the Olympics today, and I was thinking to myself, people are almost getting it. We're almost getting closer and closer and closer to the spirit of the Olympics, right? We're almost we're starting it out in Greece, taking it serious. Now we get to the Olympics, and look at what we've got. Look at what we're running in this year. People will say, oh, my God, how revealing. Right? Um, did you know they ran the original Olympics naked? naked? That's part of the whole deal. Have you seen those athletes? My God. What beauty. That's how I look at myself and I think, that's how I could have been? <sighs> what happened? Right? Where were my... Oh, my God. Take off their clothes. Olympic Committee, take off their clothes. Let them run out there. Don't worry. People get used to it. By the third race, people will be like, eh, right? And then they'll be like, wow, look at that human form. And then you can worship the human form. Oh, my God. You worship the human form? Why would you do that? Because it's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. Do you see how monism saps the nature? Just like Paul was saying, it saps the nature out of the culture. Monism needs you to be detached from your natural roots so that when you look into the eyes of he or she whom you find beautiful, that there's that incredible thing that happens. Yeah. Mm. All right. That's what we need to stifle. This is what Bacchus releases, is this power. This is what the Christ does <clears throat> okay okay let's go to the next go to that uh the last text again yep i'm gonna finish it up what happens here so dionysus is watching he raises his thyrsus right and what does he do he juts his head forward and his horns become his adamantine defense right his horns he oh. shows his horns his horns are that stone which was petrified by the reign of Zeus. What is that? What is that horn? It is Alexeitera. Second to last line. Alexeitera litho kleneoia. Meduses. Oh my god. Meduses. What? What is it? It's the Alexeitera, that stone. What is Dionysus' horn? I'm giving you right now. The very central um, uh, uh, light of the mystery. Are you ready? When you look at Michelangelo, when you look at Michelangelo and his um, Moses has horns, this is why. Are you ready? Right out of the cult's mouth. It's the Alexeitera of the Medusa. It's the Alexeitera. What is his horn? Give me the next one. It's the Alexeitera, and what is that? What is that? That's the Olympus. That's, that's who we're talking about, but it's his horn that we're talking about. Quick, get to his horn. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's coming up. Wait, wait. It's coming up. It's coming up, and you won't believe me. Here, I'm going to search it out. I'm going to search it out. I don't care. Give me the Alexeitera. Here. Here. Oh, it's not the... Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, look, people, here it is in the Greek. Wait, here it is in the Greek. It's probably the next one. Here it is in the Greek. The Alexitera Litho Glenoil Medusis. Now, listen to me, people. This is why Greek, ancient Greek is so superior. Ancient Greek and modern Greek are about the same thing. Ancient Greek has the capacity for the person who is living to make new words, for you to describe your environment in a way that has not been expressed. This word in the middle, it's words like this that our author has made up. 
And people have assumed, because classicists are stupid, they have assumed that this is because these words don't exist in other texts. No, no, no. What the Greek is doing that is different from Latin and every other language that got wiped out, what it's doing that's different is it is giving the user the capacity to create. And you don't have that otherwise. English uses Greek in order to achieve this, right? Our Anglo-Saxon, oh, God, where's that Anglo-Saxon? Where's that Spank Anglo-Saxon him, Spank guy? Him. Come here. His name's probably Fred or something. Friedrich. It's awful. Your language is awful. Right? So what is the Alexeitera? What is the Alexeitera? And I'm going to say this before, before I show you, and you're going to cry at me, and you're going to say, no, this is not drugs. This, this guy is crazy. I'm going to tell you right now, the Alexeitera is the antidote. It is what keeps the poison of Medusa non-lethal. We hold up the serpent. Now, those of you who are sitting there are going to say, no, look, he's making, he's making Christing stuff about drugs again. It absolutely <laughs> cannot be. Are you ready? Here we go. Pull up these Victorians. Oh, God, what is the Alexeterios? It's something that's able to keep off or defend or help, especially as an epithet for the gods. Isn't yeah, yeah, nice hard, you don't hour. For your salvation. You know the gospel. Look at number two, Alexitaria. What does it say right under it? Pharmacon, drug. It's a remedy or a medicine or a charm. See, to us, those three things sound totally, totally different. You know what I mean? Like, I can see how remedy goes with medicine, but charm? Yes, they are not different. Magic is medicine. It is magic in antiquity. For me to give you a drug that will cause you satiriasis so that for six long days and nights we will chase you through the forest <laughs> and we hope that you get away and that your priapism relents. This is a chemical salvation, people. Your savior was a chemical savior. And the only way he was going to succeed was if he got the antidote through that boy. And he did. Poor kid ran off. Um, Mark 14, 51 and 52, for those of you who are getting it. Go, okay, let's, we're almost to the conclusion here. Ba, ba, ba. Let's go to the next one. Boom, hit me with that one. What am I giving you tonight? What are we watching? We are watching the Parthenoi. Who are the Parthenoi? Wait. It wasn't Mary, right? Dan will say, or the, the theologian will say, oh, wasn't it Mary? No. The the blessed Mother Mary. Yes, the Blessed Mother Mary, who in the Apocrypha was fed angel food in the temple and had her fingers stained purple because she worked with a purple. One day, a midwife came in, palpated her, to see if she was pregnant and burned her fingers because of the purple. What is going on in the temple? I am telling you, there are virgins, Parthenoi, and what comes from their agrionathon? You know what an agri, uh, you, you know what agrionathon are? They are your jaws that are wild with frenzy. What comes from these Virgins who have the frenzied jaws, I need my. Oh, listen to the meter. I need my. I need my. I need my. I need my. That's a dactyl. Long, short, short. Right? Oh, God. Why? Because the sphinx. You thought the sphinx was a cat, was like a human head. You, seriously? No, no, no. These are Scythian tribes. And um, these are women who are governors, Medusa, right? And what traditions are they pushing? They're pushing the venom traditions. 
what do we cry when we cry Eova Hos, right? What do we cry? We cry Eo. We cry Eo. Could you tell me what the Eo is? Give me the last. It was the whole bunch of things. There's Enigma. Um, it's the whole bunch of last things that we, hang on, we skip these. Now we gotta go back, we gotta go back. Look at this. Oh. Here's one, Iadzo, right? Same root, to cry aloud, to cry aloud. Um, here's another one, Ia, oh my. What is the root when you're crying Eo, right? Heal, we are healing. What are we using? We're using that violet covered stuff. And what else? The Eos, the poison as of serpents. <sighs> Mad dog venom, mad dog venom. You want to go totally nuts? Take this virus. What virus? Virus is the Latin term, and it's got a digamma in it because the Mycenaean Greeks were so into drugs. Hmm. <sighs> okay, let's keep going up. Eos. What is the Eros? It's an arrow, people. Remember, we're talking about. Poison arrow using cultures, marauders, sphinxes who come in and say, give us 12 virgin boys. What? What do you want? You don't want taxes? Nope. Money's no good. They want virgin boys. Fantastic. Okay. Well, here we go. Round up your kids. <laughs> For those of you who don't like pirates, like Julius Caesar, you can hunt them down. You know, somebody asked me, I thought this was a brilliant question. They asked me, you can take it down. They asked me, they said, what happened between Caesar and the pirates? I said, um, Caesar got abducted. He was pissed that they were asking too little for ransom. Um, and then when he ransomed him, when he got ransomed, he came back with a fleet and he um, uh, insisted that these guys be put to death. Right? So he crucified them all. It looked like they were going to get away with it. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, the pirates were kind of a buffer zone against the Romans. So people were using them. And, and, and somebody asked me, why crucified? Um, I said, because they weren't thieves. You don't crucify thieves or bandits. You find them. Yeah. You find them. They may spend some time in jail. But you find them. That's not what you do. That's not what you do with a lace stace. When Jesus said he was a lace stace, right? I mean, he said he wasn't. Sorry. He said he wasn't a lace stace, right? He came out against them with the big weapons. Um, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at that type of person. That's the type of person we crucify. Didn't you notice there was a mob there? Right? Did you ever wonder that? There's a mob there. Why do so many people hate Jesus all of a sudden? Right? Um, because it was a problem. It was a problem with those organized um, traffickers with uh, basically child prostitution is what they were is what they were pushing. But um, you can't really call it child prostitution um, because it was also um, it was a range of ages. Um, but to us, it would be technically child prostitution because they're picking. The age groups, right? That are just pre-puberty to post-puberty. I'm um, thinking of it as, you know, they're kind of farming humans, right? So, yeah, that's, uh, people were not happy. And you go after those guys with big weapons. And that's why Jesus is saying what he's doing. Okay, let's go to the last two. I wanted you to see, too, that Io also is connected with the moon. And the person of Io, who is an Argive princess, right? Oh, daughter of Enochus. And that is why the Bacchans are called Enochia. Yes. Oh, the women, right? Um, Io. Think of Io. Great. Fantastic. Give me the last two. Watch this. Pull up the Bible here. And what happens? Simon Peter answered him and said, Su eijo Christos. Su eijo Christos. You are the Christ. Okay? Are you ready? So all of the mania that is the Bacchic mania, all the prophetic power, Peter is telling Jesus, this is yours. This is yours. Yeah. Son of God. 
same titles, right, that the Bakkans are using. And the only way we get to the same cult is through the same drugs. This, the New Testament, is not some cheap literature that's fabricated to try to copy um, pagan models. No, no, no. It's a dude who is using the same machinery to perform the same cult. And that's exactly what Peter is getting him. It's where he's getting him. He's nailing him. And it's perfect. It's a perfect description. Give me the last line, and we'll end up. This is, now watch this, people. These are the translations. Just so you'll believe me, when I tell you that um, theology is garbage, is complete garbage. Look at the translators. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, what? That's not what the text said. Why would you assume? Second translation, New Living. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Really? Really? What did King James say? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ. Yes. Thou art the Christ. Do you see how Christians didn't even know how to handle their own titles? Why? Julian Apostate warned us. You cannot allow Christians to educate using classical sources. They will change them, they will destroy them, and you will no longer have classical wisdom. Do you see what matters to the monists? What matters to Christianity is the box. You are either a monist in the box with the rest of us, or you're dead. We are different from everyone else around us. We do not live the same history. We follow a fairy tale, and we suck it up. Yeah. The drugs, people, the drugs show you the difference. All you have to do is follow the drugs. And the, these translators, they get my goat. I just want to finish with the translators getting my goat. Great Penelope. For those of you who are new to Lady Babylon, meet Penelope. Penelope, Lady Babylon, the cross. You want an explanation, of course. Just like Hail Satan, you want an explanation. The cross covers a multitude of sin. Look at that cross. Look at the sin that the cross is hiding. God. Bless us for that cross. Thank you for coming tonight. For those who want to become Marines of ancient Greek, Wednesday nights are night. Totally, totally without cost to you. Um, thank you for being there. Thank you for supporting the museum. And thank you for guarding that sacred bed. Hail Satan. Cosmic spells. All right. All right, all right. Well, next video, I'm going to show you some. You won't even believe what you hear and what your eyes read. Do you guys know Jesus? was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane by special forces, by a legion. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of the army go arresting him. And he was naked with the children. Did you know the 12 apostles, only the older ones, only about 13, 13 years old. Can you believe that? When the picture we see all of the Gordian stuff like that, but they, wow. You know, they're only at 12 years old kids. And uh, Dr. Hillman, he's a smart guy. He is classic. He's a master of the classics. 
ancient Greek and we translate the ancient text the origin of the Bible obviously the Old Testament the origin of Quran and the origin of uh, two other holy books which is Muslim beliefs in the eyes of al Masih, what they call it, or Jesus himself, the Lady Mary. As a matter of fact, this is so scary. Let's watch the next video and I will show you later. Thank you very much. Please subscribe, share, and leave your comment. See what you think. Okay? Bye bye.